I want to welcome to everyone. Today our guest is uh, Cage Warriors fighter Per Andre Goodwin. Uh, Barry, thank you so much for accepting the interview invitation. And uh, what can you say about yourself in general? You know, in general, few few short descriptions, so we can continue. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm a hard worker, um, a tough fighter. I think um, I always came to put on a show. I try to put on a show when I fight, so it's pretty much amazing uh, as a whole. Pretty much uh, that it was a great fight. But all right, let's get back into the early days of your career. Which was your first martial art, and uh, when did you start training MMA? Um, my first martial art. I think I learned a little bit of kickboxing when I was really younger, like uh, like about uh, maybe about nine year old things like that. My parents tried to keep me into um into sport to keep me out of trouble with it really. Um I'm I'm already ADHD, so I'm like a really hyper child, running about being a nightmare, so they're always trying to keep me busy, trying to get the energy out of me. But uh after that I've done so many sports, but um not so many martial arts, like uh more uh I've done a bit of swimming, uh I played a lot of rugby as well. So um, when I was basically I was playing rugby. I played rugby at quite a high level, and um, I, I ended, there was a lot loads of argy bargy in rugby, and uh, but basically I ended up getting binned quite a lot for fighting. So um, when I spent more time on off the pitch than on it, I decided that, uh, to change sports, and uh, I started watching this thing. Um, or UFC, there was like re reruns on Bravo, you know, the Bravo channel, that's what I used to watch it on anyway, about half ten at night before, um, I don't know, just late night, uh, about half ten, eleven o'clock, who reruns, Chuck Liddell, all, all, all the old fighters, and uh, basically I was like, I want to try that, so I started watching stuff on YouTube, and then from there went to... Um, the only place I could find that was te teaching anything similar to MMA was like a, a self-defense class, and it was a, it was like a, it, they rented out a hall and they used some mats that they that the the karate mats they used. So we, uh, we 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 was me and about maybe five or six, seven of the lads bouncers, uh, they ran the doors around where I live, and um, basically we we used to train. Uh, hand bars and uh, triangles that we watched off the TV with uh, with another bouncer that taught us. And that was that was how I started. Okay. Uh, how would you describe your fighting style? Um, I think when I first started, it was just um, it was more just uh, have a fight. <laughs> uh, that, 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 was, that was really it. But uh, now now I've. Uh, I have a lot more feints in my game. Uh, I, um, I put, put quite a lot, put, put quite a lot of work in my kicks, to the legs, and uh, a lot of work in my like literally you know, I'm, I'm, I'm my movement and stuff. Um, so uh, maybe te technical brawler, maybe something along the lines of that. Okay. Uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, yeah, they call me the Predator. Really much awesome. Who is coaching you now? Who are your sparring partners? Uh, Andrew Andrew Fisher is my coach. Uh, he fights for Bellator at the minute, but um, he's been around in the MMA game for a long time. He's a he's a, he's a hell of a fighter, a hell of a hard worker. Um, he's uh, someone I look up to really like massive, massively in MMA, but just because of his um, his outlook on life, and uh, he's also just uh, him as a person. He's a good person, which is, which is, means a lot to me. Um, over over than that, uh, there's, there's all the lads at uh, Team Fish Tank. It's, it's, it's up there at Seam. Anywhere, it's about four or five minutes away from where I live. Just a little little travel up there every day. But uh, um, I just uh, there's, there's so many good guys in that gym. Uh, at the minute, we have like uh, basically most of the talent in the uh, the northeast of England. We, we, everyone comes to our gym to train, spar. Um, uh, I like to like like this, so there's like Louis Monica. There's a guy a guy that's fought uh fought fought Chapa. So who I just who, who who just beat me. He beat uh he got beat by Chapa as well. But um Louis Louis is a guy that uh is really good but doesn't really show up on the night. But I'm telling you now, 
he's probably one of the best in the UK by far. It's just uh, it's just putting it again when you get in the cage. He's so he's so he's so good. And uh, James Hendon. Um, I, I'd like to say now, uh, if you put him in the put him in the title fight, James Hendon is the, is the title. He's the best in my eyes. I look at him; he's the best in the uh, in the UK. And uh, and everyone's like, oh, I, think I just some people just don't get enough love. Like I get I, I got I got I got I got love because of um, the way I fight and uh, the thing that James doesn't get in love, but he's he's the best in the UK and he's um I think I think uh, it won't be long before he, he holds the ball anyway. And other than that, there's Maradi and loads of other guys just just who just come to the gym and come up. Big Phil the Freeze, he was a KSW world champion. The list is endless. I could go on forever about that gym as so, well. I won't, I, won't, I won't stay too much on that one subject because you'll have me talking all day. Okay. Uh, what can you say about your first amateur fight? How did you feel heading into your first amateur one? Um, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> like, like I said, when I started uh, the, the fighting game, um, I didn't really have a coach. It was just uh, we used to just get the mats out. And uh, we borrowed, the, we we rented the mat out from the thing, and we watched, uh, and we had a bounce of teachers, uh, some triangle talks and arm bars, and uh, I knew I was tough because I was, I was, I was, I was always in fights, um, so I was just a tough guy, and uh, I knew I could fight, not 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 of any skill, but I was tough, and uh, so I said, look, I want to fight, and he, he was like, look, I, I can put you into a show. But well, I'm not coming. I don't get involved in the politics of it all. Um, this is the guy that teaches me these armbars and these uh, triangles. They call him John Calvert. He's, he's still a bouncer now. He's a, he's a good guy, but he's not. He's not an MMA coach. And uh, and uh, he um, so he goes. He put from this show called Strike and Submit. It was called. And uh, I, I was. Um, so, all right, cool, yeah, let's fight, we'll, we'll fight, what do I weigh? So I stepped on the scale, I'm like, say, 70, 77 kilograms, but almost a little bit lighter. I was like, what's, what's the closest to that? And I was like, oh, well away, so I'm a well away. I didn't, I didn't understand the weight, I didn't understand the weight cutting or anything like that, so I signed up to fight someone well away, and they get me a fight well away. I, I'm an independent fighter, I have no gym, I have no coach, me, one of my friends that I was a teacher with called Daniel Bosdell, and uh, one of um, my dad, my, my dad who he's never had a fight, he'd never fought. He, he obviously he's a he's a very very he's a tough guy, but he's uh, he's never fought in um in in a uh, in, in a a controlled setting like a boxing or a kickbox or anything like that. So we we turn up at the show and these guys are cutting weight running the bottom. Like, what's going on? Why is everyone like sweating and stuff to make weight? And I, I was just this little fat, I think I was like 18 years old, little, little 18 year old fat kid turned up to, to have a fight. And uh, and then I see this guy, he goes, Oh no, he goes, I think that's your opponent. And I think that's what my dad said to me. And I think I thought he was joking. But it turns out it was, and he's this black guy that was just ripped, shredded, and he was a bloke, he was a man, and I'm thinking, I'm I'm fighting him, mate. <laughs> Long story short, we get in the cage, and uh, I was so nervous and scared. I looked across the cage, and there's me, this little pudgy 18-year-old, and uh, I look across the cage and see this black Adonis, ripped, looking so scary. And he came out and he just had this big hoodie on. He took this hoodie off and he just saw it, abbed everything. And just, I looked down and I was like, oh, God. And uh, when he came out, it was a southpaw. And I didn't know it was a southpaw either. I didn't realise there was different stances in, it, in fighting. I just thought people just had a fight. Right? And uh, uh, he uh, beat, the, beat the hell out of me for two, two, uh, two rounds. No, he beat the hell out of me for one round. Like, cut both my eyes. Uh, he, I remember just hitting me in the side of the head. All on the side of my head was just like the Himalayans, man. Just like lumps, lumps, and lumps, and lumps. And uh, well, I said, but he didn't finish me. So we come out with the come out with the uh, second and third rounds. I just repeatedly took him down and hit him in the body for two rounds. And uh, 
he gassed out after that first round. He couldn't do anything. So he just, just let me wail on him just for two rounds, hitting him as hard as I can in the body. Uh, we finish up, he goes to hospital, uh, and I had the worst concussion ever. I was just spewing up everywhere. And that was my introduction into MMA. And that was the first fight I had. But yeah, it was a crazy time. Can you pinpoint the greatest differences between your first professional fight and your first amateur fight? Uh, my first, the first, first, yeah, massive one. My first professional fight was um, I was under a gym called the Dungeon, and the Dungeon, you know, not to train anywhere else. It was like if you train here, you were only allowed to train here. So, um, the, I, I was put in against. He, 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 he must have had a lot of respect for me or something, or had a death wish for me for my first amateur fight. I fought someone called Des Parker. Des Parker is an absolute beast, by the way. And uh, if you look him up at the time, he was a, he was a he's, he's a really good grappler. Des Parker finished me in the first round of a submission, like and that was a welterweight as well. And which I was I'm clearly was never I've never been welterweight, but <laughs> the guy just shot me in with whoever because I'm the guy that just accepts the fight. So that was my first fight uh, as a professional, and I got finished in the, in the first round. And um, if I'm quite honest with myself, I probably I probably just give up a little bit early because. Uh, he had a bit of um, he had me in a bad position. Before Cage Warriors career, who was your toughest professional opponent before you inked uh, Cage Warriors contract? Oh, um, before before Cage Warriors, on paper it might be it might have been Des, but it might it might have been that first that first fight. But um, oh no no, I fought Adam Proctor. Yes, yes. But Adam Proctor, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to remember because, uh, yeah, Adam Proctor was probably, there's another guy, look at the size of him compared to me, man. I'm just like, I was just a, I was like a cowboy. You see, if someone, if someone offers me a fight, I feel like, um, oh, I did feel like I had to take it or I was the, um, I was scared. Oh, I, was, I, I was, I was being a, a wuss. So they'll feel like, oh yeah, I'll take, I'll take 100% no matter who it was. And I had that, I had that, I had the same thing at Cage Warriors as well. So I go to Cage Warriors and even the first few fights there, the, the first fight they offered, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. So that, that was just the way I, um, I've, I've always like, been, but I've started over the last, uh, literally the last couple of years just to start changing things up, be a little bit smarter with how I, how I control my career and how I, how I control myself because um, I can't be going in there with guys that are just have a massive experience or really massively bad matchups for me. It's it's, it's stupid. Every, everyone's possible to get beat. You can beat, everyone can be beat. It's just sometimes you need to work on other things before it happens. What can you say about your first Cage Warriors fight? Uh, you fought Ellis Campson. I... Uh, Hampson. Yes, yes. Uh, on Cage Warriors. Oh, um, I was, I was, I was super nervous for the fight. Um, it was at my first big show. Uh, I think the um, uh, he was Paddy Pimlet's training partner. I think he still is. And uh, yeah, basically, Paddy. If you if you know Paddy, he's uh, he's got a big following, and uh, we, we he fights in the Echo, the Echo Arena in Liverpool, with you know, six thousand scousers. So my first my first show in a big on, on a big show, there was six thousand scousers there supporting the guy that I was fighting, and uh, I've never felt like that since. I don't think it's not. not um, not being as good, not being as good as a. Uh, obviously, it's good, but not um, in the same, same, same sort of setting of six thousand people all against you. I loved every second of it. To be honest, I was really nervous, and they were all shouting and, and they're all they're all hating us when I was coming out. It was it was amazing, but um, I, I got the wind in there. Um, I uh, beat him up for three rounds until he, until he gave up in the end. And the ref had to stop it. Uh, many of the fighters that I interview say when you fight a Brazilian fighter, it's a completely different experience. So you fought Macedo. What can you say? Do you back that theory all day long, or you say it's untrue? 
a he's not Brazilian. He's not Brazilian. I mean, he might be Brazilian, like 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 at the start. He he lives in Sweden now. He he might be a Brazilian at one point, but he lives in Sweden. He's Swedish in my eyes. I bet probably he's different fighting a Brazilian fighter, but um, I don't know. It was frustrating. I walked out of that fight and I was fine. I could have I could have fought again, but it was just it was just a frustrating fight for me. I like to fight people that want to try and finish me. And if if I think MMA on a whole is built on finishing the fight, right? If you were to look at the way boxing is built, boxing isn't built like that anymore. It might have been at some point. If you if you look back in time at some of the old fights, the four horsemen, the where where people were going in there, they were throwing leather. Now it's point fighting. And don't get me wrong, it's real good, real high level point fighting, and there's some real good guys. But that's why the, the, only, the only people that get love in boxing are heavyweights, because there's so many people that get finishes, realistically. There's, there's some, there's some. But there's a lot, a lot of mismatches and things like that. But uh, MMA is always built on the, on the thing of finishing the fight. I don't believe at any point he was trying to finish that fight. I believe he was trying to win the fight or win every minute, just get the win, just get the win. If I, if I can get this win, I'll be okay. If I can get through this minute, I'll be okay. And uh, I was, I, I, that, that's props, it's, it's props to him. It was, it was, it was, it was my, it was up to me to stop him from doing that. And uh, I couldn't, so he, he, he whooped my ass there. But um, I do believe, uh, I do believe that he was going to try and finish that fight. And by not trying to finish the fight, you shouldn't, you're not really winning the fight. How did you defeat Alexander Jacobson? How? Yes. Check left hook. Um, my, one of the best, one of the best left hooks that, one of the best left hooks that I've thrown. I'm, to be honest, my game is, 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 is I've, got, I've, got, I've got a nice left hook. I mean, like, if you spar with me, if anyone ever spars with me, they're just like, how you hit me with that? That, that, that that's my that's my, that's my favourite weapon, and uh, it was nice to be able to show it on on TV on on because uh, I got bumped up the card as well. I wasn't even meant to be on the main card, and uh, I guess someone missed weight or something, and I got put on the uh, BT Sports so everyone could see it, and uh, I, I get to show everyone my check left hook, and um, against against a tough striker, and uh, someone who hasn't been finished with strikes before either. So I get to show everyone how just how how, how good that check left hook could be yeah, when putting it in the right setting. Uh, do we have some secret behind that check left hook? For example, I'm a southpaw. Check right hook is normal to me, but check left it's kind of hard to me. You no know, different stance. And uh, do we have some secret? How do you counter it? How do you feel when he advances forward? And no, no. I, it, it, literally, I think it's the same with everything in the uh, in the in, in the sport is repetitive. If you if you if you do it enough times in the in the, in the in the in the wrong spots on the right spots and just do it in the do it until you get it just perfect. In sparring and in like in like in, in live competition and in sparring, like so you just drill it and then and then you keep on putting it into uh, action and it, it works. We do we do a lot of hard sparring at our gym when we've got fights. Um, a lot of fresh man rounds, so when you do it, so I'm using it when I'm tired, I'm using it when I'm thinking, and eventually it comes to bring it out perfect in the actual fight. I've not going to manage to uh, use it much after that. I used it a couple of times, but um, no one pushes forward anymore because I think they know that's what they're going to get hit with, and they would get hit with it as well because it's just there all the time. It's crazy. You, you, people people think, oh, I'm not going to get hit with that, and they get hit with it, so like I said. Do you have the fastest knockout victory of your career? Sorry? Uh, do you have the fastest knockout victory of your career? The fastest knock yeah. the fastest KO victory? Yeah, 17 seconds it was. It was on made from the cage. I remember, uh, I remember, I remember, I remember the fight that was yesterday. I got, um, it was a, it was a well away. I had a, a, couple of, a couple of days before, I got um, in an altercation, road rage. And ended up fighting with some madman in the street. But well, two days before I was going to actually fight on a Saturday night uh, in 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 the, in the actual cage, and uh, and I bust my knee. Like I, I tried to knee him in the head, 
so stupid. I think I need him in the elbow or something. Like this is just like the craziest thing in the world. And then um sorry, I I And um so my knee was just knackered and uh I said I remember I said to my one of my best friends before, I said, look, so I can't tell anyone because it's so embarrassing, but I've knackered my knee fighting in the bloody street what road rage in the middle of the road on the uh, A19 or the A66 I think it was stopped the car and he got out his car so I just ended up fighting and uh, hurt my knee he's like oh well, you just don't have to finish it faster aren't you and I was like oh god and, uh, so I come out like a, like a house on fire I caught him with a he got in a throw kick and I shot a, a big right hand and it just landed and he just out called and finished him off with some shots after as well. Excellent. How did the artwork Steve Amable? It was before the pandemics, the fight with, before the pandemics. Um Steve, Steve's a Steve's a he's a he's a tough fighter, really, really, isn't he? He's real tough. So I knew it was gonna be like a, a hard fight, but I, I feel like I could have done a lot better than what I did. It was it was it wasn't my best performance. So yeah, I come out the first round. I thought it was kind of easy to be honest. I thought it was. The, I said he's just following me about the cage, not really not really doing much. And then in the, in the second round, he hit me with a jab and dropped me, and I laughed. Oh, what have I done? I stopped thinking. And then um, in the third round, obviously he tried he tried to take me down, but I was just. Um, Jump, jump, pop him back, pop him right back up every time. Pop him right back up and just shot him bombs at him. So like um, when he was uh, when he was doing that, uh, the judges put it in my favour. So it was two rounds to one. I won the first and the, and the third, and uh, he, he he definitely won the second. He dropped me with a jab, <laughs> but um, that was it really. For the title for the first time against Morgan Charrier. So, how were you feeling heading into a title fight, and uh, how did you feel heading into this match generally? I mean, what can you say about the performance? Did you have some special game plan, or? Uh, to be honest, yeah, I wanted to kick his legs a little bit. I spent a long time watching Morgan. He's stunk and stuff. Um, I think it's that. Well, 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 from what I was watching, I. Well, it was a lot different when we were in there, and he's a really good fighter. Well, for, to, to start off with, um, uh, I, I, when I, what I was watching, I, I thought he stood a lot like Canelo, Canelo Alvarez, where he can just like loads of good head movement. So I'm like, cool. So if I can faint my way in, I can blast his front leg. I want to kick him low in the car because he's good at catching legs. Right? So, all right, so this is the plan. So I'm going to faint him and I'm going to kick his legs for two rounds. If I can get him that third round, then I can start working when he's tired and when I've hurt his leg. So the fight started and um, his stance is a little bit different. I'm like, oh, oh shit. He knows I'm going to kick him. So I've got to kick him. Boom. Sure enough, he checks it. I'm like, oh shit. There's my, there's my, there's my right foot gone. Um, after that, it was, uh, it, it, like I say, it was, it was, it was really, um, we're talking about crazy reaction times and, and he was super fast. And I'm not going to say I underestimated or overestimated or anything. I just, I just, um, I felt, well, I felt like why I was in there that I wasn't good enough. And uh, that's, 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 when if your heart goes like that while you're in the cage with someone, you got to try and change things up. So, I got the third round, and after after two rounds, I think I lost the third, and I lost the second, right? And I'm, I'm like, this guy, he's one. My game plan is not working. My coach, I can see it, he knows he's not working. He give me a nice, nice shiner, and again, I'm caught, so I'm bleeding now. And um, I'm like, I, which is not a problem to me. Blues, I'm not really, I'm not really bothered. But I know my legs. He's, he's, he's taxing my leg as well. He's hitting it hard. So I'm like, he's doing what I want to do to him, to me. Like, what the hell? So he studied me really well, for one. For two, he must have, I don't know, I don't know how he knew, but he just knew. I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing. And um, so I tried to change it over. I was like, right, I'm going to turn this into a, I'm going to turn this into a fight. Like a, 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 an old-fashioned brawl. I'm going to make 
So I start trying to put a little bit more pressure on him. And then he uh, caught another body shot. Like, obviously, pulled me on my game plan completely um, because I started having to try and push forward, which is, I'm not, I'm not a forward fighter or anything. I can be, but that's not what we worked on. So I spent so many weeks working on one thing and then he pulled me out of that game because I couldn't do it. And then when I was out of that game, uh, he finished me with the body shot. So it's a it's hard land. It's 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 hard because I work. I'm 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 known as a hard worker. Like every if you if you if you have any anyone knows me, whether it be work or or family or of of anyone, they they know me. Uh, like if you go in the gym, like we have like a little award things. I'm the hardest worker. Everyone knows me, Perry, the grafter, the hard worker, and my hard work couldn't beat his, the talent on, on that night. So I've just got to get better, and that's what's going to happen. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to heal up with my eyes sorted, and uh, my, uh, my legs are a little bit sore too. So once once that's healed up, I'm going to um, get back to get back. I'll probably turn up and wrestle it, and uh, my wrestling boots in a singlet. Start working on a, a different part of my game, so so I have something else in the uh, in the tool shed to bring out when uh, I am brought with when that when that problem arises again, where you spend so long in game having to come together that uh, you go right, okay, I'm gonna change things completely because I've got that in the shed. So that's what's gonna happen next. But uh, props to Morgan. Um, take don't, don't don't what you're doing over there. Take a man out of his game. And then uh, when, when he's always gave me finish him, and that's what he did. Uh, can you please describe the meaning of your tattoos? Sorry? Can you please describe the meaning of your tattoos? Tattoo, tattoo, tattoo. Oh, I've got, uh, I've got, I've got words. See, see, the heart there. The heart is, uh, that's, that's going to be on my sleeve, basically. So that's where I wear my heart, my heart's on my sleeve. That's a compass. Um, basically, got that when I basically when I met my girlfriend, things started going in the right direction when I met her, and uh, I got the uh, compass to really, really, really just to show that that that's that's where it goes from. Um, I put uh, all sorts. Of, uh, see that on the back? That's handsome Squidworth. Handsome, handsome Squidworth. Uh, do you know the draw from SpongeBob? Yes, yes, you I've heard had... of it. I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when I should have my shaved head, um, my girlfriend said that's what I look like. So <laughs> I got that tattooed on my arm. Um, uh, I've got my uh, my gym logo on my arm there. I got I got that when um, I got that when um, I think when I, when the first time I fought on the uh, BT Sport on live TV. And uh, the, all the lads are just like it. Just, uh, that just uh, showed. I was so happy that they 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 got me that far because I'd not really done much uh, in regards to MMA until I went, I went to that gym. And when I got that gym, I just started getting better. T eighteen fish tank. So I got that tattoo. Um, apart from that, I think everything else. I've just got loads of daft ones, just like uh, stuff that you'd. Uh, oh, I've got that. Uh, I just um, that is a a gun, and I just I really like the design. But it's got a it's got a uh, the the original design had a, a rose coming out of it, and that has a I changed it for um, a sunflower because the sunflower is uh, one of my girlfriend's favorite. Uh, that's a, my girlfriend's favorite flower, so I wanted that out of it instead of a rose because it reminds me of her. Um, and like uh, I put like a barbed wire and stars and things. I think I got them when I was like uh, fourteen year old or something. <laughs> really much great art. So, what are your plans for the future right now? Right now, um, I'll go back to work on Wednesday. Um, limp around with <laughs> with my bad leg and uh, licking my wounds. Um, like I say, it's uh, it's 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 hard it's hard to lose like that when everyone's behind you, and uh, and everyone wants you, everyone wants you to do so well. So um, I'll uh, swallow my pride for a few days, a few weeks probably now, 
um, get Christmas on the way and uh, get back on the horse. I said, I'm going to give myself two. I'm going to give myself until I can run again. As soon as I, as soon as I can start running, I'm going to try and get back to training as soon as soon as possible. I don't want to. I don't want to get too heavy because I've got a habit of getting too heavy. So I'm not going to let that happen. Um, and uh, I'm just going to work, like I say, get back, get back on the horse and work after the thing. I think my contract's up with Cage Warriors now that I, I was like a one fight deal. Um, so I'm going to have to have a negotiate another contract with them. Or, I don't know, maybe you never know, you never know next year. Someone might want to pay some money and want, want me to fight for them and I might might even branch out. Because, like I say, I've got to the got to the highest point. I could I could make that travel again, try and get to the highest point again, try and get to the um, highest point in cage warriors, go for the belt again, but that's a, that's a good, good few wins away. With, and that's the sign of a contract and things like that. But I know it's like... It depends what, what companies might want you, doesn't it? You've got likes of uh, Bellator, KSW. Um, God, there's loads, isn't there? If, 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 because if, Cage Warriors are renowned for not being good peers. So if, if, if there's a chance of getting enough enough money to maybe help 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 my help my, my life be a little bit better than what it is. I'd obviously, I'd obviously take the money, but I also, I don't fight for money anyway, so it's more for, it's enjoyment, I love, it's love, I love what I do, but we'll uh, we'll see how things go. The future's big, and it's not over yet, put it that way. All right, uh, would you like to add something to the interview? Is there something maybe we missed to say? Would you like to greet someone? Uh, no, no, uh, just, like, just thank all the sponsors of our... I can't even feel when we talk right now, so I'll just show them they're all uh, all at the TFT. And uh, thank, thank, thanks for the interview, mate. Um, it's not often you get someone who wants to interview after you've just been had your ass whooped. So um, th- 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 thanks for giving me a little bit of a platform after after such a an embarrassment loss to me. <laughs> That's just not me, you know. I respect the sport. I respect the fighters. To me. Many many people ask me, listen, Vladimir, why do you why do you like guys on ending st- on losing streak or such things? I just say, listen, I like the sport, man. I like the fighters. I'm not like, oh, the guy is going up, he's going. You should uh, be fair towards everybody who goes down and who goes up. You know, equal treatment, if you know what I mean. One hundred percent. Because I, when I when I, I'll be back up, I'll be back up, and then maybe you want to speak to me again, and I'll be there to speak to me again. Because I'll be coming back up soon. Don't worry about that. Can always Please message help. me whenever you want to talk. Just message me. I have no problem with that. Just to know. Sweet man, thanks a lot. All right, uh, the video will be on uh, tomorrow. Just to know, okay. I will let you know. Okay, thank you, mate. Thanks very much. All right, thank you. Have a great day.